welcome everybody for another day of Skills Not Pills. We hope you're having a great day today. And today we're really excited to have Reva Eagles with us, who is a doctor of oriental medicine and the founder of the Original Medicine Wellness Center in Santa Fe for a talk about addressing the whole person to achieve true lasting health. Welcome, Reva. How are well, you? I'm great. Thank you so much. Just a slight correction. I'm actually in Albuquerque. Albuquerque. Yeah. I so all, you know, for what you said to us, all disease is spirit with a message waiting to be heard. And the role of the healer is to say your message has been received and acknowledged, allowing healing for what the person suffering as well as the, the disease. And so tell us a little bit about how you got into this work that you're doing now. Well, my original uh, foray into working with people and helping them to regain their health was through an oral tradition. It was a pre-dynastic Egyptian Huna studies, and um, I did that for, I studied with my teacher for several years and um, did a lot of body work and uh, counseling kind of work. Uh, it evolved into a need to, I really wanted to work with herbs. and. Uh, so one of my colleagues in, my, in the mystery school that I was in said, she suggested I look at Chinese herbs as opposed to Western herbs, just from her perspective. And uh, then one day I woke up really, really sick. And it turned out I um, was diagnosed with lupus. Oh, wow. So um, I checked myself out of the hospital and said, thank you very much for the information. And I started seeing um, someone that practiced um, medicine. And it was a number of months of pretty steady treatment, but eventually um, I got to a place, it took a months of treatment uh, and then continuation with Chinese herbs for a long time. It took me a couple of years to get my energy back, but I haven't had any recurrence, so none of the markers have ever come back. I, get, I do have a couple of, um, you know, I have a little bit of a weak immune, uh, well, more like a digestive system, and I can get uh, joint pain easily. But other than that, I don't really have any kind of recurrence. And so that was, that was a pretty big signal to me that this medicine had something to it. So in the 90s, I was living in Oregon. I... Um, started doing a, a studying traditional Chinese herbal medicine. I became a certified Chinese herbalist and did that for a number of years. And, um, but my quest is always, what can I do more? What, what kinds of things can I do to, how do I help my patients even more? So that led me to uh, looking for an acupuncture school so I could add that tool to my toolkit. So I've been licensed here in New Mexico as a doctor of oriental medicine for about 15 years, but um, it was, you know, I I feel like I you know in the Egyptian pantheon there's a there's a one of the gods is Kansu and he's the god of, of medicine and the way he became the god of medicine is that he took on every disease in order to learn how to heal it and in some ways that's been my journey but it has really helped me to know how to address each individual person and how to look at not just the person but the disease because that's a very important component when you're when you're trying to heal a whole person yeah the disease is an entity it's almost like you're saying that disease is like a uh, separate thing it's like a consciousness or something like that well it can be but but sometimes the separate thing is just an aspect of the individual person and so so healing has to happen all the way around you know in our clinic we we, uh, we know that in order to really address what's going on with the person, we have to get to the underlying cause. And so we probably do more testing than just about any other place you're gonna go because that's how we determine holistically what's going on. And um, you know, Western medicine has some really wonderful advantages as far as the types of testing that you can do. You can find so much information about the person but in order to address the spirit of the person, you know, so whether you're saying psychological, mental, emotional, that has to be addressed as well. And so that can be addressed partly by, um, by dealing with the physical, but 
if you're going to incorporate everything and really bring about lifestyle change and 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 really connect someone with who they are meant to be you have to look at everything so addressing the needs of the disease helps to address in that lower in that subconscious realm so that all aspects of the patient is healed and so as part of your journey to heal yourself with uh, of lupus you had to explore probably many many different layers of your being right exactly you had to look around so what did that look like for you how did that exploration look like for you and, and then how did that translate into what you're doing with clients now well I, you know i had to do a lot of uh, i did a lot of conscious dreaming work um i did a lot of um i did physical kinds of things i did many different dietary kinds of things um but and and incorporated a lot of uh, journaling and a lot of meditation and, and a lot of spiritual ritual which really helped me come around to understand um there's many different layers to each individual person so um, I had my specific journey, which helped me to understand how to recognize someone as more than just the the physical layer that, that we see when we're, you know, with our physical eyes. There's, there's many other eyes that we can use to see a person. And so that journey really helped me get in touch with understanding many different layers. You know what I really like about um, oriental medicine is that it's, I guess uh, if we were going to say there's, you know, there's two different flows of energy, like masculine and feminine, and let's just characterize the masculine energy as like very direct, like point A, point B, here it is, every time it works that way, and I can rely on that, right? <laughs> it's sort of like this idea. And then the feminine is kind of more like, esoteric like it winds around and you wander and you go on this journey and you take a look over here and over there and you feel your way through it and maybe you get some information along the way and that makes total sense but in not in any kind of way that makes sense <laughs> it's like <laughs> paradoxical it's like i think our western culture and our western medicine is kind of more of this masculine style and the oriental medicine is more of this feminine it's kind of like this opening to signs and information that then leads to more information and there's systems too there's systems around interpreting things and there's systems around opening up the signs but it, it also it just seems more fluid talk a little bit about that because I, I guess I'm I'm trying to explain it my experience of it but I, I probably well, need some help <laughs> I think you're I think you're right um, you know traditional Western medicine is very linear so if you're here, then the natural progression is then you go here and then you go here. And when you describe the feminine, um, there's, there's a knee jerk. When you, look, when you look through the eyes of patriarchy, you see the feminine is being very scattered and all these things going on and not really connected. But, but when you step outside of that and you just look at biology, it, uh, a, a female brain has a lot more tissue that correct, connects the two hemispheres of the brain. I mean, just biologically, there, there's more tissue there. So um, there's more ability to, to move back and forth and to see the big picture. So, so, you know, that brain has a little more ability to see the macrocosm and the microcosm at the same time. And so that's where you get that, that sense of fluidity. So neither is good and neither is bad, right? So it's not a judgment call. It's just there's just differences and different ways to look at it. So... Um, what attracted me to Eastern medicine initially, instead of staying down a, a Western track that I had started in, um, was the fact that while there's that, that kind of sense of fluidity, it's actually a very practical medicine. You know, if you've got too much of something, there's tools to get rid of too much. If there's not enough, there's tools to fill up your bucket. If there's, you know, if there's, if something's too hot, then you just cool it down. If something's too cold, then you warm it up. And so it just, it just was so much more practical than, than some of the other, whether I was looking at Western herbal medicine or, you know, just Western medicine, because I'd originally started um, in a, a nursing track and it just, I could tell it was just 
the, this does not fit in a box. <laughs> I just could not fit uh -huh. in. And so um, Eastern medicine gave me the ability to create my own box. And that I feel has been the, the path that has given me the ability to continue to address each patient with, from a whole person perspective, so that I can, I can get them closer to their goals. Cause we're all, we all have something, you know, that we need. We all have, there's, you know, we each, I guess, you know, our lessons, why we come here um, are, are part of what needs to be healed so that we can really have the full experience of what we're doing here. So we can learn the things we need to learn. And so we can contribute the things we need to contribute. But when that's all masked by, symptoms and pain and and dis-ease and brain fog and you know whatever you want to call it um allowing a person to heal that just brings them deeper and deeper into themselves so they can so they can do why they what they needed to do when they came here yeah and i feel like as i look at western medicine like i just look at the the, the differences I think that it seems like it's more direct with Western medicine. It seems like it's more, uh, there's more answers, but actually the, in the Eastern medicine that I've experienced, it's more complex up front, right? So you go, wow, there's, there's all these different things to consider. There's so many things to consider. It can feel um, like unknown when you first get started. But then it's actually, like you said, more systematic and more practical. <laughs> so like there's well, more factors up front and you've got to consider all those and think about all that. But then it's like, it is, there is a progression and there is, there are things that you can do. Like, it's interesting to me. And, and, and I like the way that it, um, it also relies, it also incorporates um, intuition, which is something really unique, I think. I've worked with so many practitioners where maybe this is just Carrie Hummingbird journey because of who I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I tend to attract practitioners who are acupuncturists who also are spiritual and also um, have really good intuitive powers. And so they're operating at multiple dimensions of information. Like they're, they're, they're operating in multiple layers of, they're taking in multiple layers of information and they're assimilating it. Mm -hmm. that I, I think that, that for the most part, that tends to be true. You know, we do, um, you know, this particular kind of medicine, at least in our culture, tends to um, draw a little more spiritual, artsy kind of a crowd. But, you know, the thing about Western medicine, I, again, I like to make sure that, that nobody thinks that I'm saying one's good and one's bad because yeah, they're, they're both different. brilliant. And um, so that's why we... Um, uh, integrated our clinic a few years ago and, and practice functional medicine because then we get the best of both because the, you know, the, the hard thing for a strictly Western practitioner is that they have been asked to treat chronic conditions with the same tools that they treat acute conditions and it just doesn't really serve. So there are some brilliant things that we can derive from that, that we can, that we can take from that medicine. And then when you incorporate it with, with a, a, a more whole person approach that, you know, because, you know, part of the reason of our name is because, because Eastern medicine really is the original functional medicine, because for thousands of years, it's been developed as a way to create a state of health. But in, in our toxic world now, um, we, sometimes we require some Western tools in order to really make that happen. So uh, the blending of both has been really educational for myself and really helpful for my patients to get a lot closer to their health goal. I like that you said acute versus chronic, because I think that also is really a good distinction. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the, if, you, if you look at the way the medicine developed, you know, over hundreds of years was a, as a way to keep people from dying. And so, uh, you know, they, you can tell they weren't very good at it for a long time because from the 1200s to the mid-1700s, the life expectancy in Europe where Western medicine was born didn't really change much. So, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't until much later. But even today, you know, if you, if you go study Western medicine, you go to the hospital. And so you work with pretty sick people. So it's all about acute care. And they are brilliant at that. It is a brilliant medicine for that. 
But when, when that kind of medicine is, is taught to treat chronic conditions, you know, but still using surgery and medications and things that just mask or suppress a symptom, it doesn't really get to the underlying cause. There's no time for that. And that there's not really a path that goes that direction. So, so there are some things from that medicine that are really helpful if you can think about it as a short-term solution and then build from underneath and, and not only treat the underlying cause, but then teach people how to make lifestyle changes so that they can learn how to, to take care of their healthy body. Because you know, all we've ever been taught is how to take care of what we've got. And if it's continually degenerating, then our skill set isn't, isn't designed to pick us back up. So, so that's a lot of what we do with, with, with individuals is help create a program to help them step out of their mess, you know, in order to get to their healthy person. And I, uh, a lot of people don't realize also that, um, they don't, I love Michelle Norris is a, uh, the director of paleo FX. And she has this quote around, you know, find your new normal, like get mm -hmm. to your new normal. And I think that, um, in our, and definitely in the United States with our fast food and all this kind of eating style and don't have time to stop and have to work all these hours and this sort of very hectic pace life that we've been yes. living. Yes. Um, people may not have a sense of the deep calm that's possible to experience on a daily basis. We don't have time to remember what it feels like to have a calm brain. And yeah. the new normal, when, you know, if we're just going down a Western path because that's what our insurance tells us that we have to do, then the new normal, more often than not, is just learning to deal with the new side effects of the new drug that you've just been given. Does that make sense? Exactly. It's not normal. And that's not normal. <laughs> yeah, but normal in this society because that's the domestication. I like to use that word domestication for my toolbox mm -hmm. training. That's a domestication, but that's not normal human right. living. Exactly. And it's just kind of... We've been taught to think that the older we get, the more symptoms we're going to have. And that's common, but that's not normal. But we've been taught to use those terms inter interchangeably and, the, and they're not the same thing. They're not the same thing. And I think that depending on um, who your influences are as you're cultivating your idea about life really has a big influence on what your normal is and what you think is possible. Yes. And so this path might not be normal to somebody who's grown up in a Western mindset with a Westernized family that says, go to the doctor, get your medicine. Right. However, if you're brave enough to experience new things and get out there and try it. I was just watching a, a, a comedy act by Trevor Noah last night, who I think is just so funny. It and, is he, brilliant. and he was saying, you know, like traveling is the best thing you can do because meeting new people, experiencing new lifestyles, changing your idea of what's normal gets you open to finding out what might be possible for you that you didn't even realize was possible. And that's exactly what we're doing with Skills Not Pills movement. It's sort of like traveling around healing options. You know? Yes. It's yes. Like trying new healing cultures and seeing if that resonates with you. Well, yes. Just stepping off the pharmaceutical merry-go-round is, is a huge thing for people. And then I, I don't want people to think that my message is just go home and quit taking your pills. No, because that because that that's not the message. <laughs> But, you know, but if you have a guide and sometimes, you know, that's the best way to travel is you hire a guide. And so that's what a health coach or a health mentor is, is someone that guides you through the experiences of this is what it feels like when you feel good. So tell us a little bit about for people that haven't experienced functional medicine before, like they might go, I've heard that word, but I don't really know what that means. Tell us a little bit more about your practice and how you create functional medicine, what that even looks like. What's the experience of that? Well, so the whole point of functional medicine is to figure out where, you know, that this is a natural healing mechanism. You know, it was designed, the body we live in was designed to be um, self-healing and self-regulating. 
unless the function is compromised below the body's ability to recover and to heal. So, uh, so in functional medicine, naming the condition is not near as important as finding out why the, the condition, the symptom uh, is, is there present in the first place. So we look for why. So that's why we do a lot of testing to determine what is not functioning well, what is the, the least functioning aspect of the body, and begin to address treatment there at the root so that it helps to bring the function of the body up high enough that self-regulation and self-healing can occur. While you're doing that, if you, just, if you just bring the function up and a person's feeling good and you say, okay, you're good to go, love you, see you, bye, that eventually things are gonna come back in because at some point, if there's a symptom, there is usually some habit or behavior that is contributing to that disease. So that's where education comes in so that we can begin to help people in, in a very step-by-step, -step, um, pretty simple approach. And steps are different for each individual person. So one person might be able to take leaps and another person has to take baby steps. Some people might not need very much mentoring or coaching and some might need a lot. So um, it's very individualized, but we help you get from where you're at to the function of your body high enough, but then we have to educate people how to maintain that. What does your individual body need in order to, to stay healthy as possible? So the goal is rather than have someone move in, I mean, we're pretty fun in our clinic. We have a really good time here, but nobody wants to live with us. So our goal is to get people to the point where when they're done working with us, they have the skill set rather than the pill set to be able to maintain their healthy body on their own. So our purpose here is to make disease and chronic pain optional for as many people as possible. And if we can do that, if we can have someone leave knowing that they're off that medical merry-go-round, then their, their life is, is much richer. It's a larger life because, because they're at choice. They're not constantly looking, going from doctor to doctor, looking for you know, something magic, some, you know, help me, and then they get more pills. Yeah, and I, I'm glad that you said all that because what was going on in my mind was to make this point that it takes time. It is not instant, no. <laughs> and that is a big fat bummer for even me. I, I get it. I want a silver bullet just like everybody else. But what I've learned through this long journey is that, um, you know, time is better. Time is, is your friend because, because it allows you to integrate you know, at the level, at whatever level you're at, however much you can integrate at a time. Every time, every time you take in um, information, you are in formation, right? I mean, you're each time, each, each little piece that comes in, sometimes it, you know, information that comes into your mind as it settles into your cells can cause, can cause spiritual shifts by sometimes even changing your DNA to accept this new information so that you can become a different self. So in many ways, I feel like I'm many levels of a walk-in of my future self because I've integrated information that's allowed me to become more me. Yeah, and, I, and also just wrapping around to the topic that we came here today is like it's teaching you something. So yes. If you've got pain or you've got a disease or a diagnosis or a label or whatever the symptoms are, that is actually teaching you something you need for your journey. So what did lupus teach you? Well, a lot of things. I learned a lot about boundaries and um, I learned a lot about uh, self-love. Uh, I learned that there were things that I needed to be able to share uh, and the course that I was on, the direction that I was going was not going to get me there. So um, I think the, the biggest thing I learned from that and from many other things, you know, even little things like, hi, I got a broken finger. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, it's like what I learned is rather than saying, oh, why did this happen to me? I say, why did this happen for me? You know, what can I get out of this? What benefit can I get? 
you know, I mean, you know, I broke my finger. Oh, I guess I have to slow down a little bit. <laughs> you know, it just, it, every little thing can be an opportunity. So, you know, so, you know, what's that thing grandma used to say? You know, obstacles are just blessings in disguise. Every time you have something that's, that isn't going the way you want, you know, we're taught to think there's something wrong with us, but there's, but it's not that there's something wrong with us. It's there's something, there's some opportunity to learn something and to grow. Yes, absolutely. It's definitely been my understanding of the journey. And, you know, I've, I've encountered my own physical challenges and they taught me many lessons. And I started thinking of them as teachers, you know, as teachers of things that I needed to cultivate within myself so that I could live a better, more whole journey at all levels. I had a physical challenge that actually was teaching me about um, how I needed to honor myself as a woman and how I needed to have boundaries, emotional boundaries with other people. So it's interesting uh, what you can learn from these physical challenges that can bring you into a new understanding and a new way of whole being, like expressing yourself in relationship out in the world, how you think of yourself, how you think of your body, how you take care of yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's really great. Well, I wanted to uh, give you a chance to tell us a little bit about your clinic and you're in Albuquerque and you have a wellness center. And so of yeah. course people are welcome to visit you at the wellness center. Yes, we actually, um, we see a, 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 you know, per the bigger portion of our patient load is our local people, but we also, um, we do a lot of, um, uh, consulting with people really all over the country. So um, it, it you're, it's not necessary to be here and be local in order to um, have the benefit of some of the things that we can help you with. So um, we've started doing that recently and getting a little a little telemed. So that's my you know my new foray into uh, technology. Uh, so I admire yours. You're you're way ahead of me, but. Uh, <laughs> Really, we've been able to help a lot of people, and so um, we do. We are doing stem cell therapy, which is something that you know people come to see us for. But if if people are just other than that, um, we found that we can help people in a lot of different ways with a lot of different kinds of health conditions, whether it's autoimmunity or digestive issues, brain health issues, um, you know, allergies, just diabetes you name it. Um, we've, we've been able to help a lot of different people with a lot of different kinds of conditions and you don't have to be local. So you can call for a consultation and we can talk about how we might be able to help you. Um, but like I said, our whole purpose for being here is to help as many people as possible get off the merry-go-round. Wonderful. So. And your website is original medicine, ABQ, and that is in the description for this talk. So you guys can, but you know, if you, if you're excited, I hope you guys are excited about this as I am, but we are the experts of Skills Not Pills are currently working out our framework for membership. So Reva is going to be part of that membership, one of the experts. So <laughs> very exciting. So exciting. Yeah. So we're going to be able to provide some regular help to people on a monthly basis through this membership program. Yes. And right now we're, we did some surveys. So if you have feedback on that, reach out to me. I'll send you a link to the survey. You can tell us what you want. And uh, we're in the process of developing something right now. It's very exciting and we look forward to being of service. Wonderful. Yes. Yay. All <laughs> right. Well, thank you, Reva. And, uh, and you guys know where you'll be able to find more of her at her website and then also with our Skills Not Pills membership. So check out our website, skillsnotpillsmovement.com. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys on Friday. We've got another broadcast coming up. So stay tuned. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you, Reva. You guys take care now. Have a great day. <laughs>